this guy I've worked with many, many times over the years, and we're starting off in great style. A brilliant comic. Would you please go for Mr. Stephen K. Amos, ladies and gentlemen? Hello, hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening, fellow Nigerians. It's... <laughs> oh, wrong gig. Uh, very, very nice to be here. I've just had my Christmas holiday. Is it too late to say Happy New Year and all that shit? It's fine, isn't it? It's Happy New Year, right? I went to Thailand over Christmas because I've got a bit of money, right? Mm. That's all right. I don't need to be here. Uh, that's not Argos. Oh, sorry, Argos. It's the sort of shop that you go... And what it was, I saw an advert in the paper. It said, all-inclusive holiday. Now, if you're British and you see the words all-inclusive when they're talking about holiday, if you're honest, you go a bit giddy, don't you? What, free shit? <laughs> On a regular basis. Boom! What about alcohol? Yeah? Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> and by the way, that's me miming, drinking a lot of free alcohol. Yeah, not a massive cock. I was in <laughs> Thailand, but not the right area. I... <laughs> I got to my resort about four in the afternoon, typically British, I'm on the saw straight away, knocking it back. By five o'clock, pissed in bed, right? <laughs> Off my face. The next morning at breakfast, the Thai waitress comes to my table and she says this. Now, you've got to forgive me, I can't do a Thai accent, right? I'm just going to do for you what I heard her say. She was like, hmm. <laughs> Morning, how are you today? Yeah. So I'm fine, thank you. She went, hmm. <laughs> the whole hotel, they talk about you. I thought, oh my God, what did I do my drunken state? Who did I offend? I said to her, what are they saying? She went, hmm, they all say, Samuel L. Jackson, he get fucked last night. <laughs> now, half of me was quite proud. Samuel L. Jackson, A-list Hollywood superstar. But then I remembered he's fucking 65. She's trying to say about me. And have you ever noticed, whenever someone says you look like someone, it's never, ever, ever somebody younger, slimmer, or more attractive than you. No one's ever stopped me in the street and gone, oh my God, Will Smith. I know, it's uncanny, isn't it? <laughs> Although near where I live in South London, no word of a lie, someone stopped me in the street and went, oh, Amos, I've got it, that's it. You look like a black Alan Sugar. <laughs> Why are you applauding that? See it now. I look nothing like him. D do I? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> do you think anyone's ever stopped Alan Sugar in the street and gone, you know what? <coughs> you look like a white Stephen Camos. <laughs> and I should apologise about doing that voice, you know, for the, for the, for the woman in that, in, that, in that bit of routine. Some people have said to me, you can't do that, it's racist. It's a gross stereotype. Now, obviously, you know my sensibilities by now, right? Does anyone here genuinely think me doing that joke and that voice was me being racist? No? no? Okay. If you didn't think that was racist, what about this? <laughs> I did a show in Hayes in Middlesex. I drove to the theatre because I got a car. Boom! <laughs> As I approached the theatre, I noticed all these fireworks kicking off. Elaborate colours, big bangs. Somebody clearly spent a lot of money, right? I get to the theatre, I say to the audience, fireworks, what's happening? Someone at the back shouts out, oh, Ramadan. And I said, do, 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 Is that wrong? I want to ask you a serious question, bearing in mind all the problems that we've seen in the world in the last couple of weeks. Do you think, I know we live in London, right? And you're London city dwellers. Do you think we'll ever live in a truly post-racial, harmonious, multicultural world. Will that ever happen? Okay, a couple of yeses, a few noes. Well, here's my very basic analogy. You look quite young. How old are you, son? 25. 25. I could be your dad. Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> He's a white man. <laughs> and this isn't prison. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? What's your name, sir? Sorry? Ed. Ed. Okay, Ed. This is my very basic analogy, right? Of a, a post racial multicultural world, right? Everyone loves a jelly baby, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Madam, favourite colour? Red. Good answer. I was doing a gig last week. Someone said, oh, blue. There aren't any fucking blue ones. <laughs> All right? 
So maybe a bag of jelly babies is a perfect example of a truly post-racial, multicultural world, right? All different colours, all different flavours, all happily crammed together in a bag-shaped housing estate. <laughs> I was in Australia when I thought of that joke, and I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll go into a supermarket, I'll try and buy, buy a bag of jelly babies. I cannot even tell you what I found. This is not even a word of a lie. This is, is any, any Australians here? Yeah. Oh, well, you can vouch for this, right? I went to a supermarket to buy a bag of Jelly Babies and I found this. This is genuine, folks. This is a bag of all black Jelly Babies. <laughs> only available in fucking Australia. Am I right, madam? Yes, and they're called Chicos. <laughs> che and look how they've depicted the black child. He's wearing dungarees. <laughs> has got one silver tooth, smack my bitch up, and is nailed to a fucking wall. <laughs> is this genuine or not? And I kid you, I look, I, 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 the back, a serving suggestion. Bite their heads off to stop them creating mischief. <laughs> the fuck is that? I was so shocked, I bought these, and I showed them to my Australian producer, and he was like, and Chico's love those. <laughs> you can microwave them too. Microwaving black babies. <laughs> it's like coon cheese all over again. Do you know they've got a cheese called coon cheese in Australia? It's called coon fucking cheese. It's even advertised on Australian television. Get your coon cheese, get your coon cheese. Obviously, not by a black man doing that. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. And I said to the Aussies, why is it called coon? You can't say coon. Some of the Australian audiences got quite defensive. It's just a name. It's just a fucking name. And I was like, well, the Ku Klux Klan is a name. They don't sell pillowcases. <laughs> Be funny if they did, though, too, please. And and I kid you not, I go back from Australia, I was doing that coon cheese routine, and by sheer coincidence, at that gig, an Australian man in the front row. You know, the suave, sophisticated creature? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was early man. <laughs> <laughs> I did that coon cheese joke, this guy stood up and he went, Mate, at least we didn't call it nigger cheese! <laughs> I was like, what is your benchmark? I said, this is London, you can't say that. I said, do me a favour, go to Brixton, South London, find a supermarket and ask for cotton cheese. <laughs> See how far you get. <laughs> but nothing, honestly, I kid you not, even in this day and age, 2015, nothing phases me, right? I heard stuff, ask all the comics on tonight, stuff on a regular basis that makes me kind of go, what the fuck? I was in Somerset, right? Somerset, right? I was met with pitchforks. <laughs> And I was doing the show, right? About 55 minutes into the show, I noticed a man about 75 years of age in the middle of the audience wearing a suit and tie, silver hair, putting his hand up. I thought, wow, what a polite heckle. He's like that. <laughs> so I said, yes, sir. And he does this. <clears throat> Excuse me, jester. <laughs> I let that go. And I said, yes, what's the problem? He said, I've got a question for you. And I said to him, you know what? I'm in a good mood. We're near the end of the show. What's your question? Without missing a beat, this is what he says. <clears throat> is there any truth in the rumor that black men don't go down on their women? <laughs> I was like, hold on, I'll call the others. <laughs> I was like, Winston, <laughs> is Leroy there? <laughs> could not believe this man had lived 70, 80 years on this planet in Somerset, waiting for one of us to arrive <laughs> so he could have the answer to that burning question. But I've got to be very honest with you good people, that really is not my area of expertise. <laughs> Sorry, girls. <laughs> know what I mean, Ed? So what I'm trying to say, folks, right, let's not judge each other, right? We're all the same. I know nothing of your world, Ed, but we're the same. If you cut me, do I not bleed? I'll stab you back. Don't fucking think about it. <laughs> cut you up, blood. 
My first gig, right, the gig did not go well. The audience didn't get me at all, not one single laugh. So I got drunk, pissed, to console myself, right? And I'm staggering home. And in the distance, as I'm getting home, like 10 o'clock at night, I saw a little old lady. And folks, as she clocked me, she clutched her handbag thus. Yeah, something inside me died. So I went over to the little old lady, and I took that handbag. <laughs> If you expect fear, I will bring you fear. <laughs> I was born and raised in London. My parents are Nigerian, right? For me, a dilemma. Wh where are you going? I have not finished! <laughs> it's a bit racist. <laughs> Please laugh in time with the others. <laughs> For me, a dilemma. What am I? Am I British? Am I Nigerian? I said to my dad years ago, Dad, what am I? What am I? My dad said, Stephen, never, ever, ever forget your roots. First and foremost, you are Nigerian. Unless you're passing through immigration at Heathrow Airport. <laughs> then tell them what they want to hear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've got a fantastic night ahead of you. I do thank you very much for choosing to spend your Monday night. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Save it for a second. But I've got a feeling, uh, Ed, you and me, we've had a connection, right? There's stuff we can learn from each other. Out of everyone here tonight, I know for a fact you will never forget me. You know why? You're young. You're at that age where you still touch yourself. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it in that special way. And the next time you do, you're going to see my face. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stephen K. Amos, ladies and gentlemen, if you like them, let them hear it. <laughs> Stephen K. Amos, ladies and gentlemen. Stephen K. Amos, only 14 years of age, ladies and gentlemen. What a talent.